Walking over to the Bissette house. Two weeks after the experience. Let's see if the floor shakes this time. You okay? You ready? This is the infamous house. This is it. Wow. That does just shake when you step, but we're gonna hold still for a bit. Yeah, but see before. It was vibrating. Yeah, when you it was vibrating still. pretty good too. Yeah, it was. It wasn't little. It was a lot. He would have been standing. Oh, right like, through there. He would have been standing like right here. So right up through that hole right there. Wow. I don't really well, feel anything today. No, I don't. Nothing. See, and I saw him right there. Nothing. Right here. Nothing. Look up. Look down. Boom. Yeah. There he was. And he was right there. Right through that crack. Well, hello. If anybody's here and wants to come play with us. From what I gather, you didn't like people being here last time. Okay. I want you to come out, whoever you were. It's just not the same, is it? No, it doesn't have the same feeling. No feeling that that's... It was just really heavy up here. Right. Well, that day when we were here, I mean, it was it was definitely a heavy feeling in here. And today, it's it's not there. Just any other normal the other day. Thing. Come on, show yourself. Well, you know what we did last time was we asked it to give us a sign. Right? Now, last time we were in here, uh, we asked you to give us a sign, and you did that, and as you can tell, we left. Um, They're back now. If you would like us again to leave uh, this home, please give us a sign. I think the girls are coming in. <laughs> well, so that would be interesting. Let's listen to what it sounds like when they come in. That's why I'm filming them down here too. I want to see what they. Okay, you can hear them very clearly. And those people you saw were down the way. Yeah, I mean, see, you can hear them. There's no way no one can. No. came in here. Hi. I didn't even jump. I knew you were going to do that. Well, you're better looking than the last guy, I guess, according to John. You hear me? Yep. We hear you now. That squeak of the steps, and that's exactly what we heard. All right, and you guys were, were still, no doubt about it. It's just different. It's just different today, you know? It's not the same. Well, my name is John Phillips. I work here at Bannock State Park. I'm the interpretive specialist here, which means I talk to people about the history of Bannock. And Bannock was founded in 1862, as gold was discovered here by a man named John White and a party from Colorado, actually heading to the Salmon River in what is now Idaho. But in route, they hear discouraging reports, too many people, driving the prices down, driving wages down. So they strike out, and lo and behold, here uh, on what they call Grasshopper Creek, they find a significant gold strike in July of 1862. After that point, the town is quickly filling up. Uh, by that winter, there's over 500 people in town. Into that spring, there'll be some 3,000 people in town, and they will be many more expected to be heading this way, but then in May of 1863, at the end, there would be a gold strike at Alder Gulch, which is Virginia City, Nevada City. So the rush then started to head there. So I mean, that gives the town a reputation, but the town does not die by any means. It's just revamping itself as the easy gold disappears, you're getting into more industrial, corporate style mining where you get more investment, more machinery, less manpower. And the town is going to continue. Um, it's going to continue really up until the Second World War 
with the, um, at that time, President Roosevelt, by presidential order, simply prohibited all non-essential mining in the United States, so gold and silver mining was shut down. That's the practical end of town. The town continued to survive after that point, though, and the last permanent resident would not leave Bannock until about 1875. Bannock goes through all phases of gold mining, from the simple placers of uh, pick, uh, pan, and shovel type work to large industrial dredges to hard rock mining. We go through all phases of mining here at Bannock. And I always tell people that's really, truly the story of this community is a town that struggles to survive. We be in an economy based on one extractive mineral, gold. And for those of us in the West, we'll have a lot of towns just like that. Uh, um, right off the back, I'll say, I've never experienced anything. Uh, one of these uh, groups have actually told me that closed-minded people can't see things, and they told me I was closed-minded, but I don't see myself that way. I will say also that I've met a lot of very reasonable people, people that have told me stories of, about encounters they've had. The Beset House, I've had people tell me stories Lots of different stories. One that I particularly remember happened just a couple years ago is I had a group of students out gold panning and two ladies um, went into that building. Well, they eventually came down and got me and they said they had not read the story because I don't like to tell ghost stories before people encounter things. But they had told me that they had gone into the Bassett house and hadn't seen anything or heard anything. They walked all over the place and as they were exiting, they heard children not crying, but singing upstairs. They said it frightened them, and they came down and got me, and I was gold panning not too far from there, and went back with them, and we walked back through and absolutely saw nothing. But they were convinced that they had, had seen or heard something in that building. And like I said, many very reasonable people are having these same experiences. I'm going to record you, so why don't you do the EVP session? Okay, this is John and Scott in the Mead Hotel at Bannock. Did you hear something? I didn't. Maybe I heard something. I thought I heard a, a, a faint whisper. Yeah, I might have heard that too, actually. Now that I think about it, I heard something just like, yeah. Anyways, hopefully this thing, I, the device that I hold in my hand is very powerful. It is able to pick up a lot of noise. Now the last time we were here, in these rooms, we saw a figure, a shadow. If you're here, could you please show yourself to us again? I just heard something down there. I thought I heard something too. Down that hall. Like voices. I can tell it sounded like a scrape or something. I mean, it was. Last time we were here, we saw a shadow move down here. Was that you? Just a second. So I'm sure I heard something, but it was like echoing. That time it did sound like the voices, but. It creeped down here. I heard something that sounded like multiple voices. like a Yeah, well, quick, that's what I thought I heard. Like a very quick, like, but like multiple voices. Did you hear that? I didn't hear that. I thought I heard a voice. Another one. Again, they're really faint. I know, and they sound like echoes. I, yeah. That's what I keep on hearing. It's like, 
someone's talking downstairs, but it's like kind of echoing up something, like almost like it would come up from a vent or something. Yeah. But of course, there's no vents, and there's we're the only ones in this building right now. And there's not many people on these grounds. We've only seen two other people, and I've seen them through the windows walking clear down. See, those guys are way down there. See, and there's the second couple. So both couples that we know of that are on the grounds are both down at the other end of the street. I swear, there's, I don't know, I've been hearing stuff like almost like there was something right here. And then when we're coming down, it's almost like a herd. I don't know. That wasn't that. I thought this door might have gone across the board, but it wasn't. Uh, the Bisset House, um, also as our tour book will describe it, the Crying Baby House. Exact year on the construction of I don't know, but we believe a man named Amid Bisset uh, came to Bannock in 1864. He would own numerous property throughout Bannock. Uh, the Bassett House was said, and it gets a little tricky, but late 19th, early 20th century, that to prevent epidemic from breaking out, that the house is used to quarantine children, and that a number of children die in that house, giving it the nickname the Crying Baby House. And there are a number of people that definitely hear the sounds of children in that house. Uh, Amid Bissett would die in the 19 teens, I forget the exact year, and um, he left us an interesting history about his experiences here, so. Is there any physical descriptions of Amid? Of? Yeah. Of Amid, yeah, there are physical descriptions, and I forget, there are actual pictures of him. I mean, he lived, He's a member of Montana Society of Pioneers and such things, so they took pictures of him and he left a number of, of written articles that he had done about his experiences. And I don't know if I have a picture of a mead here right offhand or not to show you, but uh, yes, we could find a picture of a mead. This might have, we were confused about which was the supposed haunted one. This may have been it. Gosh. Okay, my name is John. And we will be here briefly. In my hand, I hold a device. It is a very powerful recorder and it records sound and if you speak it may be able to pick up your voice you getting dizzy like me yeah this floor is like all messed yeah. up do you keep on feeling vibrations when we're not moving? yeah but again, like I said, this floor doesn't feel very stable. Okay, we're going to walk to the back here. John. I just saw there was something right there. I'm not joking. I just saw it was like a foot. I'm not joking. I saw it. It was like a, it's like a foot. I mean, I just saw something else. No, I swear. I saw like a, it was like a, a, a black shadow, but it was like a foot. I saw it clearly. And then when I was coming up here, now this was out of my peripheral vision, but I saw movement right here. I 
I'm not joking, man. There was like a foot. It was just like a shadow of, I, I looked and I saw it and it was clear. Cause it was like, I could see the step and then it was walking. Holy sh Who's walking? It was from the stairs right there. Dude, we were both stationary and there was, I know. Those foot, those footsteps that we just heard, we were stationary. There was nobody walking. If there's somebody up here, and see our foot, our footsteps sound different. No, I told you, I walked in, I could see. You know, I could clearly see the step, you know, and the light shining down on it. And then next thing I thought, it looked like someone just picked up their foot and I could see the shadow of just their foot sticking out. I mean, I couldn't see, you know, like toes or anything, but it, it just looked like a foot, like someone had their foot there and they just went like this. If there is a presence here, if there's somebody up here or downstairs, would you please make another sound or speak with us? We're not here to scare you. If you're trying to get away from us, you don't, you don't need to fear us. We just want to make contact. If you want us out of this home, you need to give us a sign right now that you want us to leave. There's people outside. Are you sure? Let me see. Because I just caught a voice. Okay, there's some people down there. Yeah, there's a little girl. Yeah, but how far away are they? Um, I don't know, but they're, they're right there. No, it's them. Did they just say something again? Yeah. Okay, because I just picked up another voice. At least I think. Yeah, it's just the echoing. There's the man right there. It's the grandparents with their two grandkids. Yeah, that was kind of freaky. But I could kind of tell it was coming from outside. Stop! Ah! 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 Okay, just a second. Stop! Just don't freak out. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. Stop! It's all right. I saw something down there! It's all right. It's all right. You're not going to hurt us. Don't freak out. It's all right. It's all right. Johnny, it's all right. It's all right. Get out of here. John, I'm going to help you, okay? Now, don't get scared. Don't get scared. Okay, it's okay. It's all right. Now, let's go. Let's go. Come on. Come on. They were looking up. It's all right. They were right there. Get out of here. Let's go. Today, uh, we just came to do some quick filming to, uh, you know, get some footage for Mysterious Destinations. And uh, we decided to go down the road to a place called the Bassett House. Uh, as myself and my brother Scott walked into the building, 
the activity seemed to pick up immediately as we walked in the door. Uh, we weren't there too long and we, my brother believed that he saw somebody move their foot uh, on the second floor. Uh, as we, we kind of ran up the stairs trying to see if there was somebody up there, when we got to the top he believed that he saw a um, movement in the, in the room. Uh, of course when we got to the top there was nobody there. Uh, we heard, I definitely heard footsteps that was not coming from us. It sounded like somebody was walking up the stairs or walking in the corner of the room right next to us. And it was very loud, it was very audible, and uh, I had never had footsteps that sounded so loud and so close to us. Um, to be honest, my hair stood up on, on end when I heard those footsteps. It, uh, it kind of freaked me out. Uh, we realized that we were hearing some very small voices. We went to the window and we believed that possibly those voices were some, from some children down the road, although they were kind of far away. Uh, well, as we were walking, they have like these pipes coming up through the floor and there's, the pipes don't fit exactly the holes that they're coming up through. So you can actually see down into the, uh, into the first floor. Uh, as we were walking, I looked down and through the cracks in between those pipes, I could see down on the first floor. Um, I believe that I saw a figure, the full figure of a man looking up at us from the first floor. Um, it, was, it was a pretty frightening experience, to be honest. We, I, I believe that I saw a man with a scraggly beard, uh, dark eyes, he was white, maybe a little bit longer greasy black hair that wasn't like super combed. It wasn't a total mess, but it wasn't totally messed up. He had on a dark button up shirt, maybe he looked like, uh, like cotton with dark pants. And he was simply looking up with his eyes about, eyebrow raised uh, like he was annoyed that we were up on that second floor or that we were in the house. Uh, this, I have seen things before, but this was like a person standing there looking up at us and um, it did it did scare me uh, i'm going to be honest it, it scared me quite a bit i've never had that experience before um, i've seen things before but i think it's because i've always been able to rationalize them uh, what i saw today is something that i don't know i don't know what it was and when we went downstairs, we just wanted to get out of the house. When we went downstairs, there was nobody there. There was nobody there. The doors didn't open and there were no noises. So uh, that was my experience. And I, I guess I saw a full bodied apparition. So, uh, well, I guess that's what we're, what we're doing this for, right? That's it. We'll be here very briefly.